Welcome back to Real Community Talks, where we meet with micro-level influencers doing macro-level things. I'm your host, Matt DeSilva, and on today's episode, we have Joanne Santos, a.k.a. Prayers, Prose, Poetry on IG, a.k.a. the author of the popular book, Growing Wings, on the show today. Joanne, thanks for being here today. Oh, it's a pleasure. So for those two waste people, and I don't know why you wouldn't know her who don't know her, <laughs> uh, Joanne is a, are you ready for this? Um a popular author uh, of the book Growing Wings uh, that just released this March 2018, which, mm-hmm. by the way, we're going to talk about an offer for you guys a bit later. Yes. Um, she hooked us up. She's the plug. Um, an early childhood educator who graduated from Humber College with an honors diploma in uh, early childhood education, um, worked with the YMCA, the Albion Boys and Girls Club, uh, Humber College, and has run creative writing workshops for youth at the Boys and Girls Club and at York University. Yep. Was part of the herd, formerly known as uh, Spoken Herd back in the day. Was part of Read to Rap. Helped to build a church youth group in Brampton called Defined by Christ. Helped run a clothing line called Run to Yo. Was an, I'm trying not to like slip up saying this. <laughs> this was an crazy. administrator and did communications for the record label Write Music. Oh and goodness. among many other things, she's a writer, an author, a poet, an entrepreneur, an educator, an event planner a social media influencer, oh a community outreach person, and is just way too dope to fully capture in an intro. So was that accurate? You made Did me I leave anything so out? good. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, why don't we segue into what's your origin story? So who is Joanne Santos and where are you from? So yes, as you know, my name is Joanne Santos. A lot of the people who are really close to me, they call me Jojo. I'm actually really comfortable with that name because okay. even like a lot of like my youth and like when I started working with Boys and Girls Club, they all knew me as that. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm here from Toronto. I was born in Toronto, um, been pretty much been here like my whole life. Um, and yeah, I've been building, um, just working as an educator, ECE. Um, I started off doing camps and those kind of things. And um, I've always had a passion to write. So that's always been a thing that's just really like I'm really passionate about. Mm. And I started writing about when I was five, like when I could first even write wow. anything. So um, yeah, that's pretty much what I focus on right now. Um, I have a passion for both education and for writing. So mm. so why Growing Wings? What is this book and why did you go all in to self-publish your own book? Um, it's always been a dream of mine. Like since I was a little girl, I've always like, okay, the two things I want to be is like an educator, like a teacher and um, an author. So I feel like I'm living that mm. dream now. Like yeah. it's manifested. Um, but yeah, with Growing Wings, I actually had a really hard time titling it. I had somebody who was helping me with, well, I had a, a lot of people that were um, just like helping me with the book in the sense of just like giving me ideas and, and whatnot. Mm. It was actually initially supposed to be called Seasons of a Poetic, which is oh, okay. actually a dope, yeah, it's yeah. a dope, it's a dope title. But um, I felt like after a while, um, as I was like building the manuscript and completing the manuscript and whatnot, um, I was like, oh, it doesn't really resonate with me. Like, mm. I want something that makes sense. And oddly enough, like I was listening to, um, do you know Daniel Caesar? He's actually from Toronto as well. No, no. Anyway, he's dope R&B artist. Yeah. And he like, he titled his album Fro- Fro- Freudian. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. And I was like, his last song on his, on his album was titled the same thing. And I was like, you know what? Like I could do this. Yeah. Like <laughs> I could do this in my book. Like I can yeah. name my book after like my last short story. So, mm. and I felt like that resonated because um, I've always been about like, you know, like freedom and that's what yeah. writing does for me. So yeah. I felt like the t- that title fitted well for the for the book. Yeah, I yeah. feel like sometimes the best things are like the most dopest things in our life kind of happen unconventionally or like exactly. Unplanned, right? It just like literally like I was on the bus one day and I was like, yeah, let me just that's it. I'm going yeah. with that title. I'm not even gonna like like I'm not even gonna hesitate. I'm gonna yeah. go with this title. Yeah. Like I'm in that season too where I'm just like trusting and not like I I'm someone who is naturally a perfectionist so i yes. overcomplicate the process yes. and yes. i'm like what are people gonna think and i play out like this movie in my head and when it hasn't even happened yet in real yeah. life but i'm just learning right now to be like as soon as it comes to my head you know i'm like that's a good idea instead of mm-hmm. putting it in the back to wait for myself to have like five more ideas i'm like boom that's it and just exactly it, right? i'm the same way yeah. so that's why I, fo- I found it was so hard to even like just kind of get through the process but yeah yeah so what was that what was that day can you can you look back to that day or that light bulb moment or was it a culmination of days where you're just like that's it. I'm going to go all in and just like self-publish that book. Um, yeah, I, I definitely can't zero in on like the one day, but it's mm. definitely a, like a like a multiple amount of days where I was like, because I mean, like just being a creative, you, you doubt yourself a lot. So mm. there was a lot of days I was like, oh, my God, no, like, I don't know. I don't I don't even want to write this. Like, I don't even know, like, if it's going to make sense, yeah. you know. So there's a lot of days that like a lot of doubtful days that I had. But mm. um, 
I just I feel like a lot of the times where I was just like you know what like like I can't I can't quit like this is something I've mm. always wanted to do you know and um I'd get like little signs and like little like things in my day where I'd be like no like this is something you're supposed to do so like just yeah. just get it done mm. and I mean everybody has a different process you know like there's people like there's authors I know that have like five books or like wow. three like a yeah. lot of books like this is my first book mm. and like it took me a while to get here and I I at the end of the day I actually enjoyed the process so mm. Um, I think that's an important part, you know. So speaking about that process, mm -hmm. for those who want to, you know, self-publish or even mm -hmm. just publish their book, mm -hmm. what do they need to know about the behind the scenes work? Like how did, how stressful can that be? Oh my gosh, it's, it's crazy stressful because like, <laughs> like, honestly, like I, for me, this, this was a whole learning curve because I didn't know how, what, what that was going to look like. And I mm -hmm. kind of just learned on, on the way, you know, and, um, I, I would say like literally like your manuscript is really important mm. it is really important like get a good editor um that was one of my main things too when I was writing because I got like I edit my own work I'm a perfectionist so yeah. I I do edit my own work but then it's like you also have to get that second mind or like that it's second true. opinion so uh, I found luckily found this one girl so good she was because she edits she writes poetry and she edits like mm. that's her thing so that was that was awesome um and just like i feel like the manuscript and the process like the creative process just making sure that you you're always you're continually writing even if you just write like two lines true like because that's how i work like i'll write like two lines and i'll come back to it mm. like at some point i'll be like you know what this is like i can finish this now yeah you know so i feel like the writing part is the most important part like all of the actual publishing stuff comes after mm. so like i feel like if anybody's out there like trying to write their own book or like publish self-publish their own book definitely focus on your manuscript mm. especially if you're because if, what your book is also like a collection of pieces too yes, right yes. and i guess it's different than just like a chronological story where it's like right. you don't have to write them in order of right. the events that happen and but it's like just put them down on paper and i find like that that was the most like people who who do write poetry would understand but like people who are not really familiar with the genre mm. it's literally like it's it's different because it's like not all the pieces are written at the same mm. time yeah you know so and you might and that's that it, i feel like it, it inexplicitly or even explicitly shows your growth because oh, you yeah. might talk about in one piece something that maybe it was a struggle but then in another piece you talk about the like uh, i guess the triumph but then you might come back to it after right, right. and it's not supposed to right. it's not meant to be chronological exactly right? um i mean we go through different seasons and phases in our life right? yeah so talk about that moment when you first held the final copy of your book in your hand what was going through your head my gosh i couldn't fathom it mm. like i remember it was a day like this it was actually pretty like cloudy rainy outside and i picked up my proof from my from my from my um the, from the printers and they're actually out in richmond hill um mm. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is real. Like obviously there were some mistakes because it was approved, but I'm like, I finally have this like yeah. in my hand. Like this is insane. Like I didn't mm. even, I couldn't fathom it. Like, yeah. And I was with my with my boyfriend at the time because he came with me and I was just like, he's like, look at this. Like you, it's like you did it. And I'm yeah. like, I know this is crazy. Yeah, like, yeah. It's insane. It was, it was honestly such a surreal moment for yeah. me. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so if you could summarize your work, obviously you talk about different things and mm -hmm. there's different messaging, but what's one maybe overarching theme that kind of flows throughout your work or something you're trying to communicate to people through your book? Definitely growth. Mm. Growth. Like if I had to sum everything up, it's growth. Like just being able to come to a place where you're like, you know what? Yeah, this happened, but I accept it and I can move mm. on. Yeah. So I feel like that's why, you know, the title Growing Wings really like just makes sense for the for everything it's an overarching theme because mm -hmm. a lot of the pieces do cover heartache and and you know heartbreak and you know yeah. just finding yourself you know mm -hmm. um but it's all it's all a part of the process so it's all about a part of the growth process so i feel like growth is a huge theme overarching theme yeah 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 so you mentioned um when you started writing at five mm -hmm. and in the dedication section of your book it reads to the five-year-old girl who dreamt and knew herself you inspired this manifestation this is for you. So normally I ask this question, mm -hmm. you know, if you could go back in time and I'll still ask it, but I mean, yeah. what would you tell five-year-old you if you could warn her about anything? But I feel like five-year-old you and all your experiences, like you said, was the reason this book came together. Correct? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So for like, sure. like, like sometimes like I think we, we both like Mike Todd, you've watched Mike Todd before, right? That, yes. That pastor, oh my right? gosh, he's awesome. Um, and he talks about the concept of, be, of being planted, not buried. Mm -hmm. And like how when a seed's in soil and for lack of better terms in crap, it's in manure it's in yes. terrible situation yes. right we would look at it as a terrible situation being planted and buried look exactly like the same thing right. until something sprouts up right so right. it's your perspective on it right so right. like talk about some of those um experiences that kind of were um 
just like inspiration for your work? Wow, there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, like, like say everything you're lot. like right now. Um, but I could, I, I could honestly like narrow it down to like um, one of my actual like what really inspired this book and like really I think got me to like just get into that zone was um, in my first year of high school as a freshman. Um, I was actually admitted into the mental health. Mm. Um, institute um i was going through a lot of um just like for me like transitions was always a hard thing because like you know i was in a catholic school so i was like jk to grade eight i was in one environment and when i got used to the people and everything so when i transitioned over to like a new school meeting new friends like having different pressures and all that all of that i think um i just really had a hard time managing that and um i ended up getting admitted into the mental health um institute and um that during that time like it was actually throughout all of grade nine during that time i didn't really have much to do like there was like they have organized activities and stuff Mm. but um i remember there was a one there was one moment where i was like you know what like i can't like i can't deal like this is like i'm so yeah like i need to do something Mm. so i remember going to like the receptionist and i was like hey like can i have like a paper and a pen (laughs) and i brought it i went i took it i went back to my room and i just started writing like i just started writing all my feelings all my thoughts Mm. like just being in that situation and what that was doing for me and that was a pivotal moment in my life yeah like it was like yeah joanne you're supposed to do this Mm. but at the time i didn't know that at the time i was like oh my god like this is so like i didn't i don't even want to be here but it really it really created substance and it created like a real purpose in me Mm. so um that's definitely one moment but like i I mean i've been through a lot of different situations with heartbreak and just Mm. like different people and i feel like and like as you'll see if you when you read my book like you'll see a lot of pieces do deal with like heartache and and those kind of things so definitely those 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 Mm. situations definitely inspired that too it's crazy though because when you um when you look at that at that moment that was therapeutic for you you, oh yeah i know you've talked about like writing being a therapy to you but at the same time too it's like eventually that those pieces would be the inspiration for something that's gonna like grow you and benefit you and like profit you now right but we never look at our trials in in the moment as something that could potentially be something that elevates us right exactly and then two is like um i feel like i mean i was when i went through some bad breakups i became like the super woke quotes person and i just started writing and it was it was therapeutic for me trust me me, it is yeah but it's like we we can either you know wallow in that or we can use it as as a platform or use it as a way to communicate stuff that can uh, like potentially help people so i think that's so dope um so obviously you, you you talked about um you know uh love relationships heartbreak mm-hmm. are all constant themes in, in mm-hmm. your book mm-hmm. and at the end you wrote about zephyr and i was so i'm like I, I do my google research like i act like i'm a real researcher but i just google research so i'm like i, I yes. research what zephyr is and i it says that like it's a mild breeze or wind yes, right of the and west then, wind yeah. yeah and then and then and then you there's a part where you say so like i had a few theories and then i'm like you talked about a past relationship so then um there's a part where you say it's the first time I've ever given poetry from my heart, my heart to a man. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, and then I'm like, wind, and then I'm like, I know you're, I know you're a Christian, and then Holy Spirit, and then relationship. I'm like, what's so? Who is Zephyr? I just need to know. <laughs> this is so funny. You know, I used to think like, you know, if I end up being on an interview or something, and somebody end up asking me who Zephyr, Zephyr is, like, I'm just gonna be like, uh. anyways, he's actually a character. Well, he's a character that I intentionally created, mm. but it is obviously based on somebody that I, I've known. But he was, yeah, like not to kind of give it away yeah, too yeah. much but like he's definitely he he's somebody that was really important in my life mm. and i had a really long friendship with him yeah and um yeah he inspired that like a lot he actually inspired a lot of this book and um just like just the falling out of like our situation and like obviously we're not friends anymore we're not that close but mm-hmm. um yeah like we were we were so close at, at one point like literally like we used to listen to the same music like i could kick it with him and like it, yeah like it was a real chill vibe but um yeah so that that whole letter like that last page and like that whole story was definitely inspired by him Mm. yeah so um one thing that i respect about you and it's something that we talked about before was um not always pursuing that next level and jumping that next hurdle but kind of taking time to rest and stay still right and you know because you get in this mode where your consistency can kind of over exhaust you and you feel like Mm. you have to keep putting out content so how important is this current season of rest for you it's like vital I used to like in the beginning it was it was so hard to accept like I'm not even gonna lie because like I just transitioned into like working um part-time like this this January like this new year um so I was just like because I'm so used to a fast-paced environment and like mind you like just 
just a couple months ago or just last year, I was working full time. I was working on a book, you know, missed just like dealing with a lot of like family stuff and, you know, like friends and, you know, like you have your own like obligations and your own responsibilities. But it, it became a lot because like being able to like, you know, just like, yeah, you're, you're there like eight hours a day. And then like, you're mm. with, cause I'm working with children. So that's yeah. like a whole nother Stress. thing. And this is not, these are like younger children. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's a different type of, true. um, I guess mental exhaustion and mm. just like exhaustion period. And then just coming back and then having to get into, into a creative zone. Oh my gosh, it was so challenging. So right now I'm learning and this is actually something I, I I've read and that I've, um, kind of i learned from uh, one of my favorite author authors i don't know if you've heard of him his name is rob hill mm -hmm. but he's like yeah he's one of my favorite authors but he talks about like you know ma maturity like a sign of maturity is pace so being able to mm -hmm. pace out yourself and just everything because at first like i'm like yeah like i really like i like being in a fast-paced environment but now i'm realizing and i'm coming to accept that you know you need that rest yeah because especially as a creative like you can't if you're always on the go and you're always like you know i gotta get this done and i gotta do this it doesn't leave you room to really enjoy the process mm. the creative process yeah, so yeah. right now i get like i'm reading novels right now like i'm consuming a lot of content mm. and i'm finding that like there's there there are different seasons in, in everybody's lives but for a creative in in general like it, for a creative specifically like we go through so many different types of seasons so yeah. there's a time where you're like i like there's times where i was like especially for my book i'm like i'm not taking it in no content mm. I'm going to focus in on like, what's, what's, yeah. what's, what, what is my inner self saying? What am I saying? Yeah. So like there are times I go into isolation and I go into like solitude and just like mm. figure out what I want to write. And then, and then I go into like a cons consumption, mm. um, stage where, yeah. or like phase where I'm just like consuming a lot of content. Mm. So there's so many different ways to, to get inspiration. And I feel like as a creative, you can limit yourself. If you're always in isolation, like it doesn't feel as balanced. You know what mm. I mean? You yeah, kind of yeah. need that okay you know what like oh this is what's happening oh i oh this is and, and just being tuned like in tune with things that are going around like around you like and like other authors and like other or just like other just people that you enjoy like listening to or reading about like i feel like that's important import, mm -hmm. important part of the process so wow like it's so funny because yeah. um uh, one thing that's cool about the show is when you guys are saying stuff like i, I start thinking about other moments and start mm -hmm. connecting the dots for myself like it's it's just as this whole talk is just yeah. as much like uh therapeutic for me than it is just to put you guys like to, to talk to all, uh. all the good stuff you guys are doing but i was just remembering um so i'm actually um i mean the listeners and the the viewers are gonna know that i'm setting myself up in seasons because i know that i'm gonna need that break and oh, it's sure. so true what you said like before i used to be like oh but what about the algorithm and youtube and oh, instagram God, i gotta yeah. stay consistent yeah because like you automatically it, it's true you automatically start dropping followers if on instagram that's the way the algorithm works is, is if you're not po posting content people I mean, just people just won't engage with you anymore. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like stressing out. But then, like, I was watching, um, I was watching this, this, uh, I don't know, something like, it was one, one interview, and they were saying that, um, don't get so like personal when people stop consuming your content. Maybe they've consumed all that they need, and they're starting to, you know, go in isolation and start embedding themselves. Oh my gosh! And yeah, I'm like, 100%. I, I used to get so, I used to get like when people started dropping off or they unsubscribed. I'm like why like just leave the subscription because i need it though i'm joking um but i'm like <laughs> i took i looked at it in the other way and i'm like it's all about perspective too oh, right yeah. and um no that's something i'm kind of definitely looking forward to where i can get a few episodes like a couple of episodes in the bank a few months episodes in the bank where i can take a rest because i've seen that about myself i used to be that guy who like you know used to you know watch sermons then watch like motivational stuff and then do all this mm -hmm. kind of stuff mm -hmm. to the point where i'm like i don't have one i don't have the time and two i can't kind of cloud it's good stuff but even good stuff can cloud your thinking and your process and uh, inhibit your ability to put out content so 100 percent. yeah i kind of kind of you kind of just spoke to me in that and it's like I, i'm kind of looking forward to that but then also is just you know taking that time to recuperate because it's hard to generate content when you're when you're physically and mentally drained of right? course yeah so one thing i like is that um content planner that you use to help organize your work so i feel like for me, when I started finally mapping out like, okay, like today I have a recording, then I have another one tonight at six. And then yeah. I even started like scheduling, like, okay, make sure you take time to edit. Make sure you take time to like watch Bob's Burgers on Netflix. Like, you know right? what I mean? Like just yep. personal time. So talk about that, how that content planner has helped your workflow. Um, So it's actually, the content planner is created by Kat Gaskin. She's mm. um, a 
boss she's a boss she's a boss lady here from toronto um i found out i found out about it actually through instagram so she's she has a pretty like big audience so like i guess it's easier for her to like get her like messages and like just her just her content across so um yeah I, i purchased it for this year so i started using it this year there's some months that weren't as busy as like for example from january to march like i know i showed in my stories like at some point that i was like oh yeah like i was so busy and i was because i was getting ready for like my book launch and like just launching doing the pre-orders and then there was a there was a couple months that i didn't have like a lot of things like in in the content like in planned in the content planner and that was because I was moving so like I didn't even there was a time where I, I didn't get to set up time to be like okay this is what I'm gonna do and this I'm gonna set up my content but um yeah like it's been a it's been like it's been a learning a learning curve for me too because like I'm still learning how to plan content in, in a sense and just scheduling time and managing time to do different things mm. but um I definitely th- feel like it does help especially just having like a presence online and just like being able to you know just like okay like I'm gonna post this today and just like post something else tomorrow or maybe just kind of like space it out but um like yeah there's there's some weeks like for example like like I've focused I'm focusing more now on like things that I post that will resonate with my audience mm. as opposed to the aesthetic I used to focus so much on wow. aesthetic yeah and I'm like it, to the point where it was like exhausting and mm. i didn't want to post anymore yeah. so there was literally a time like maybe a month or two where i didn't post mm. like i would be active on my stories but i just didn't post anything because i was like because i was like literally like oh okay um you know like i don't even know what to post because i was so focused yeah. on on the aesthetic but right now i'm more focused on just the messages coming across mm. so then i've noticed that my um that my interactions have picked up mm-hmm. because people are really resonating with the messages that wow. I put out. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah I know. Cause I used to, um, like, I can't believe my Instagram, like my personal Instagram, I used to say like 3000 total posts. Now I, I narrowed it down to 500. Cause like I deleted a ton of stuff. Yeah. I mean, okay. I'll be honest. Part of that was my aesthetic look kind of crappy. And I mean, like I was posting no, a lot of sure. like stuff that like, I was still learning social media. So like now for instance, flyers and promos, I don't post that on my main thing i posted on stories i think stories right. have like changed the game for oh, social for media sure. but like now i'm just being more intentional like i used to post every day on my personal account and now i might mm-hmm. post maybe like once a week or like you know three times a week and it might be spaced out but i noticed that you're right same thing my engagement's gone up and more authentic engagement because right. normally you're just getting like you know people that like and, and my posts are more intentional like i'm posting right. like all right i'm posting stuff on my podcast i'm posting stuff from out in the community i'm posting stuff where like you know, it's just something, just real talk from you or whatever, right? right. Um, or it's just the, the 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 posts that get the most like is every every time I'm with my family. Like, I've never gotten a selfie as much likes as the one of my family, but I guess it's something that people really look, look at and value, right? Right, exactly. Um, so um, you mentioned that um, in your prelim that you're a hopeless romantic. Oh, yeah. And um, how your favorite quote from your book is, you could say it. Oh, it's, um, I'll, I'll, I'll flip to the page. She's going to do a live reading. <laughs> it's act i don't know i i feel like because when i wrote it i'm like yo this sounds so romantic Mm. like i don't know it's just one of my favorite (laughs) just one of my favorite um quotes but it's at the end um so that same story that you brought up earlier about zephyr but it's in the love letter and it goes when we are ready we can walk alongside the shore where sand meets water and where fate meets forever i just i don't know i just feel like that's so romantic Mm. if someone were to say that to me i'd be like yeah yeah (laughs) True. so so what it so um what it beyond it's just romantic what does that mean to you personally like if some trying to explain that to someone um i guess it just means that um because like uh, also like i'm not just like a hopeless romantic but i'm also a hopeful romantic so mm. i guess that's where that kind of comes in because it's like even though um me and this person in the story didn't work out let's say i always think about okay maybe in another li- lifetime so mm. i guess that's where the romanticism kind of and that type of romantic thinking comes in and it's like you're hoping that you'd be able to be with this person in the next lifetime if there is a next lifetime mm. and i guess that's just where that goes and it's just like a very poetic way of saying that you know like maybe i'll see you in another lifetime mm, yeah that's just how i kind of see it yeah some of your poems they kind of i mean not that they're necessarily the same topics per se but they kind of mm-hmm. do you know devon franklin yes yeah so like it kind of <laughs> reminds like he, he has that whole concept of the weight and mm-hmm. like um how you can be intentional in the weight and waiting for a person so i kind of right. got some of those vibes with that too but nice. like but it's too i like what you just said not just hopeless but hopeful romantic yeah, because hopeful thing, yeah. i always say to my youth and i say to people and you you were saying that a lot of people come to you for relationship advice oh, too yeah. but it's like what i always try to say 
state of people it's like you have to be like 100 percent whole it's not i'm not saying you gotta be perfect mm -hmm. but you gotta be whole in who you are and loving yourself first because if you leave any percentage for that person to to cover you or, or you feel like like that person's your identity once they right. leave who are you right right so that's exactly it talk about like people coming to you especially i mean obviously your work um, <laughs> is relationship bound but talk like, about some of that experience it's it's so funny like i always find it so interesting when people are like and and these are not even people i talk to every day they just like come mm. up and like in my dms and they're like yo like girl like i'm i'm going through a situation like can you help <laughs> me out and i'll be like and my first response is like sure <laughs> but um it, it can get a little draining but like i actually I like imagine. helping people like because i i use my experiences as i guess kind of just as a pointer and just kind of like to, to to just as like just to help people to really understand where they're at. And I mean, they don't have to necessarily be going through the same thing because every mm. person's different. But um, yeah, it's such an interesting experience because I'm like, I don't, I don't really see myself as like a relationship yeah. expert or anything, but I've gone through a lot of situations where I guess people could relate to and they're going through a similar uh, process or a similar situation. Mm. So um, yeah, I just helped them out. And I'm just like, you know what? Like, hey like if if anything that i've gone through can help you you know progress mm. then i'm like i'm i'm down for it. like i'm willing you know so yeah, yeah that's what that mm. so um obviously when i was reading um your book and i noticed some references um mm -hmm. there is parts where you touch on faith so yeah. one thing i like to ask on this show is as a holistic thing of who, like who is Joanne? It's not just like work. It's not just your passions. Right, like right. I look at culture. I look at faith. So if any, what role has faith played in all of what we talked about today for you? Mm, like everything. Mm. I feel like that's that's what led me to creating this book, to finishing it. Um, it's 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 the basis. You know, it's it's literally like what keeps me going. Like if if you can't, because the thing with faith is like it's the unseen, right? You don't know. Mm. You don't know um, what's gonna happen. So having faith, it just allows you to just keep going. And it's that substance, right? So with, with like, you'll see, like, especially in the, the like, like, as you were saying in the, in the third part of my book, I talk, it's a lot of, like, conversation with Most High. Mm. It's a lot of conversation yeah. with God. And um, I like to make, like, I, I wrote it in a way where it was, like, it could, it could be relatable to somebody else, even if they're not, let's say, Christian. Yeah, but just true. having that, you know, just those, a meditative type of, like, mm poem where people could just be like oh yeah like she's like there's there's a higher thinking here there's a higher mm. you know um like just a higher purpose in in this in this in this poem so yeah like uh, faith has played a big big role just in everything and like who i am like i feel like without that like i wouldn't be here like i wouldn't be where i am today so mm. i like that too because um and and you have a really nice like a uh, like an artistic or poetic way of balancing that too because i'm not saying that you have to balance faith per se in what you do right um but i know that automatically like sometimes people will be like okay i'm just tuning off because it's something faith-based or so or specifically right. if it's something christian right. based right? right but like something that i strive to do and i know it's something that you've been successfully doing is just being like i can still speak facts i can still say something right. that's going to help you and yeah. i don't want to have i don't always have to be like you're a sinner jesus loves you you know what i mean no, like that exactly and explicitly through my life and even just through regular stuff like right. if you look at if you look at christ and the way he spoke to people he spoke in their context exactly. he didn't always say you know like the torah this or whatever or the bible right. he said there's this man who had a farm you know what i mean right. like relatable stuff right, right. and I, I i'm so tired of people just being like oh, I'm just going to tune off. Like, I could be dope and I could be Christian. Yeah. Like, they don't have to be, you know, um, mutually exclusive. They don't have to be exclusive things. They could be, you know, together, right? Um, so I, I big you up for that because it's 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 almost like if people who are, like, influencers on social media, they're either starkly Christian or starkly not. Right. But to be both and show people that you're doing life and going through your process, yeah. I think is so powerful. I feel like that versatility is so important mm. because you can reach people that are not necessarily wholesome christians or yeah. like you know it's just because I, I and that's something that i had to learn just on like in the journey like i won't flat out say okay i'm, I'm christian but like it's just, i want them to be able to see because like you know yeah you will know them by their fruits right yeah so that's something that heavily inspired mm. me obviously that scripture and it's actually one of my favorite scriptures but i think it's first Corinthians first corinthians 9 22 and it's it's the scripture that's literally held me and that's helped me kind of get in that mindset and, and i think it goes um like i'm paraphrasing it i've become all things to all men so that i may save some mm. so just 
being able to be versatile wow. in your communication with people and how yeah. you deal with people yeah. is a big part of people coming to know christ or coming mm. to know most high or yeah. however you know what spiritual that spiritual background that they choose to follow yeah right? yeah and that's the thing too like um a christian may look at this podcast and be like yo he's christian but he has people who aren't christian and it's like this is the whole point of my show is right. i'm not trying to say th them versus the other no. this is a community and like exactly. we're, we're all together and like we may have differences of opinion yeah. or beliefs but I love you still. Like I don't exactly. have to. I don't have to go to the same church to love you as a person, right? No. And my my goal is, I want to just have dope conversations with people about life to show other Christians like this is what Jesus did. Like he he wouldn't mm. be in the church. He'd probably be like, I'm blowing Ossington with homeless people, exactly. or be like with like or people who, um, not that that's just my only example of who you'd be with, but I mean like right. people who society deems oh you shouldn't hang out with them or you shouldn't be like them or exactly right. So yeah, I think I think that's so dope how you kind of blend that. Um, so before we uh, go into the into the the, the opportunity, where I'm going to give you some uh, a chance to kind of spit some of your stuff. Yeah. Um, and I know that like I said, our experiences make us everything. But if there was one thing that you can go back and tell grade nine Joanne, mm -hmm. what would that be? Oh, Just man. about to enter high school, if you could say something to her, warn her, give her a piece of advice. Honestly, I think it's just um, breathe. Just breathe. Mm. I feel like we that's something we forget to do a lot yeah and and it's because i because of just like getting going into a new environment and just like meeting new people and just being in a whole different space in that in that in that time i just tell my like my younger self like yeah just breathe it's gonna be mm. okay yeah and what you're going through is it's meant for your your higher purpose mm. yeah that's it i like that too because most people say like stuff that they would not do like tell them yeah. tell, tell them to not do this but it's like in that you're saying it's going to happen, but breathe. Exactly. Right? You have to embrace it at some point. Exactly. You can't stop what's supposed to happen, what's supposed mm. to happen to, to, I guess, to further your purpose yeah. in, in life. So yeah. um, I don't even, I, I don't even like when I, even when I like, cause I did a lot of mentoring too with young people. Like I don't even tell them like, don't do that. Like even if they're about to in, in, like engage into something that they're probably not hundred percent about, like I'll just be like, you know what? Even if you decide to do this, you can't look at yourself as you're bad or you're wrong. Mm. This is a part of your process. Wow. And that's, and that just comes with maturity. That comes with growth. That comes with, you know, understanding myself. Mm. Cause like, what would I tell myself me going through this situation? Wow. Yeah. So when I, when I talk, like I, I mentor like this one girl, she's so sweet. Um, and I, this was back when I was still working like with, with youth and um, doing like camps and stuff. And we're still cool up until this day. Yeah. So she'll hit me like, we'll go out for lunch and I'll like make sure everything's paid for and everything. And I like, will just talk and she's, she'll go through all these situations. And I'm like, you know what? Like you can't even, you can't even be mad at yourself for this. Like mm. it's, it's okay. Yeah. Like you're here, like you're alive. You're, mm. you got through it. So like, yeah. what's the, what's your next step? Mm. And, that, and that's, that's just like, just me going through my own stuff and like what would i tell myself yeah so i, I just give that type of advice and like i don't want to sound like oh my god you should have never done that mm. like you know like that scares away people yeah you know what i mean True. so and it's too judgmental too so i've had to learn how to like you know alter the way that i speak with with youth and just with other people mm. yeah i'm just sorry like i, I can't even imagine how it's going to be when you spit your stuff but like <laughs> i'm still just trying to dissect some of the stuff you said and one thing that really stood out to me is when you said I'm not going to give advice like that I wouldn't give to myself. Yeah. And so often do we give advice, yeah. but a judgmental advice. Yes. But you're giving advice that you've probably either spoken to yourself or someone's spoken to you. Right. I think that's so powerful because it's yeah. realistic advice. It's not it like, is. oh, because I mean, how many times, and I'll be honest, I've seen something in a movie and I tell someone to do that, right? <laughs> but I mean, like it's that true. happens, but I mean, like you want to give, people want to know that you're giving them advice because you've been in that situation. Exactly. Right? Yeah. All right, so before we go into rapid fire, like I said, um, actually, you know what? Um, before you talk about your stuff, why don't mm -hmm. you talk about the opportunity you're going to give to some of our, our our listeners and our viewers? Oh, yeah, this is going to be so fun. So I did this because I'm like, yo, Matt's so cool. <laughs> he's dope. I love that, that he's just like a dope host. So and I really like like the Real Community Talks like environment and just like the whole podcast. So Thank you. to everybody that's watching or to everybody that's listening, I'm going to be running an, um, a coupon code on my website for all products. So for both both the ebook and for oh awesome yeah for both wow. the ebook and for Thank you. for the 
um, the paperback copy. So um, the coupon code will be called RCT5. So you get five dollars nice. off your purchase. And so you just have to Jeez. enter enter it at, <laughs> at, at checkout. So yeah, that's live now. So um, I'll be doing it for the rest of September, and I'll probably extend it yeah. depending on like when this episode releases. For sure, for sure. But yeah. yeah, so that should be cool. Awesome, and we'll drop it down in the link, and we'll definitely heavily promote that. So yes. um, after you hear stuff, you're definitely gonna want to buy that <laughs> book. So uh, Joanne, the mic is yours. You do your thing. Perfect. You guys are about to hear some fire. <laughs> I want to choose like a good piece. I don't know. I have so many favorites, but. Um... I know, and like when you have a collection of art, it's like how it's do you? It's like how do I cheat? This is like, <laughs> this is like a thing. Um, you got to do an episode like if you guys remember Shawane's episode. Uh, he's a, a spoken word artist, so I'm like, yo, we got to do like when when I do that live event that I've been planning. I'm like, I got to oh, do so many stuff. Are you planning a live event? Hopefully, like that's oh what gosh. I want to do where I do like a panel I'm so, episode. I'm so down. Um, okay, so I'll do Sweet Deception. All right. This is from my guest. Yeah, part two of the book. I escaped reality to experience high-rise condominiums and ninth-floor nostalgias. You had the perfect view, yet your, your views were distorted. I looked for love in your satin sheets after a low-lit dinner and one too many beers. I thought you were looking for the same thing. Maybe love is not that easy to discover because cuddling turned into comfort and you hugged mm. me like I was misery. Misery enjoys company, but you didn't own it that night. You lit one and blew me down. I should have known before I entered your suite. How sweet was that deception? Mm. And that sweet deception on page 44. Wow. Yeah. That's Jeez. probably one of the situations where I was like, why am I going through this situation? Like, I'm so much better than this. But then again, you mm. know, that's just a part of the process, a part of being gen gentle yourself. So I guess yeah. after writing that, I was like, yeah. And I think like, I mean, a good a good uh a good piece really paints like a, i don't know if i just think this way but i think very visually like a yes. like a movie in my head yes. but it paints a picture and it's so poetic and artistic in that and i was like already imagining that and i'm like yes. geez man like you could make like 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 videos where like you voice over mm -hmm. and just do it like a music video type thing that'd yeah. be so oh my dope. gosh i've been like that's a dream of mine yeah so, like once the budget comes in for that or yeah like, yeah yeah like i was always like like wonder about doing like short films too because mm. like, i'm a visual person yeah right? and like a lot and the reason why i didn't even add like illustrations in the book is because i really focused on imagery and that's one poetic device that i use mm. constantly in the book to paint that picture in yeah. the mind. so yeah yeah all yeah. right so we reached that point in the episode where it's rapid fire so first thing that comes to your head pepsi or coke coke yes advil <laughs> or town advil apple or android apple favorite spoken word artist of all time Oh my gosh. Uh, Rob Hill. Mm. Favorite author of all time? Favorite author? Oh my God. James Redfield. Favorite deaf poetry jam video on YouTube of all time? Oh, she had. Definitely mm. she had. Rudy Francisco Scars or A Lot Like You? Oh, I would say A Lot Like You. Mm. Favorite vegan dish of all time? Oh my gosh. There's so many. Um, <laughs> favorite. Okay. So definitely like because I love Caribbean food, but like oil down. Mm. without the meat <laughs> mm. favorite place you've traveled local or international um i've been to cuba cuba is beautiful mm. so nice favorite book you read or are reading oh my gosh i just finished the to all the boys i've loved before trilogy which is like a uh, ya um young adult novel yeah, like, yeah. series it's just so awesome so i just finished reading that but that mm. was awesome nice. i enjoyed that favorite song right now that you're listening to Oh, trip by LMA, and mm. they did, and DJ Black did this really cool like mix. So it's with uh, the Jaquise did a cover, so it's like mixed in together. Yeah, it's yeah. really sick. Yeah. Sick. So who's that one person that everyone should go right now and follow on Instagram or check them out? One person. Oh my god. Someone you like, you checked out, and you respect what they're doing. Alex Wolf. Mm, okay. Yeah, we'll she's so that. dope. Favorite Saturday morning cartoon when you were young. Favorite Saturday morning car cartoon. Oh my gosh, Ninja Turtles? Mm, yeah. Probably most favorite likely. One. Which one's your favorite? What do you mean like favorite like Uh which one which turtle? Oh, um Hello, Raphael. Uh, the nerd one with the purple. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I um, liked how nerdy he was. I love that he was so smart. Is uh which one's the red one? Is that um, Raphael? Yes. I was yeah, I'm just a hot I know. Um <laughs> most influential person on your life. Most influential person. There might be multiple, but if you can say one. Oh. Uh, um i'd say my sister mm. yeah nice um that's a different answer i'm getting mom's dads i'm like yes we finally got someone different yeah my older um, sister 
if you could go back to a single point in your life, what day would that be? If you could just revisit, go in a time machine. I remember being in a car and it was like so sunny outside. Mm. And this was a time where I just literally devoted my life to Christ. Like I just got mm. baptized. And like a couple of days later, yeah, I was just like riding down this car, riding down in a car. I don't even remember whose car it was. And like I could see the sun shining through the window. Mm. And like I literally started to cry because I was like, I felt God's love. Wow like immensely so if i could go back to a time i'd probably go back to that time because wow. it was so powerful yeah you don't even just write in like poet poetry you you live it like that's oh crazy gosh. um if there was a movie on your life what would the title read and then i'm gonna do a follow-up oh my gosh um, if you could put a title to you for my life mm -hmm. um that's a hard one um especially when like you're very like there's a process to you yeah like like you're never you're never ending but um probably you're never ending that's the title oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay sure let's go with that yeah um and what person would they cast to play you if you weren't in it oh so it doesn't have to be a direct look alike who would capture you as an actor oh my gosh hmm you know what? It's funny. I'd probably go with Lana Condor because I just saw her in this in the Twelve of Boys. I'm so obsessed. This is a crazy. Like I should. I'm promoting this thing. Show? Yes, it oh, is. Okay, it's good. so good. But probably her. She's so cute, and I feel like really like her like her her facials. And because I just because I just saw her in that movie, I feel like she'd be able to play like this really quirky, like cool, high energetic person. So yeah, mm. probably her. All right. <laughs> if you could have coffee with anyone from any point in history, dead or alive, who would it be? Oh my gosh. Who would you want to pick their brain? Shakespeare. Mm. That's so random, but like wow. I loved his works like yeah. when I was reading it in high school. Yeah. But like Shakespeare, maybe. If you could resonate with any animal, what animal would you be? A butterfly. Mm. A monarch butterfly. I feel like, yeah, I was gonna ask why, but then I'm like, yeah, growing wings. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Name a song that when you hear it, it puts you in your feelings. Oh my gosh. Um Floetry, sometimes you make me smile. Mm. If you were stranded on an island, what two things would you want with you? A pen and a, and a, and a book mm. or a journal. Yeah. What style did you rock that you look back now and wish you never rocked? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, oh my God. That's so funny. Um, Probably like the, the like double or like the xlt that's like a, the long, a lot of and i had shoelace in my hair wow. like to match like <laughs> oh my gosh i probably was like oh like it was cute at the time but now i think about it i'm like what the heck was i doing <laughs> yeah um what job would you be horrible at oh being a waitress mm. i'm so clumsy <laughs> like i'm so clumsy it's so bad i don't think i do that job really well where do you feel most out of place where do i feel most out of place um in a crowd mm. yeah i'd say in a crowd when you die what would you want your biggest legacy that you leave behind to be when, pe when people remember joanne what would you want them to remember i just want them to remember that like i was that i was as i impacted somebody especially mm. through my words you know like because i'm a writer and like a poet like i'd i'd want somebody to remember things that i've said to them or the, like just like the influence that i made mm. for them so yeah, definitely awesome so i know i know it's uh like you said about titles, it's hard to come up with them on the spot. Yeah. But if you could put a title to the current chapter of your life right now, this season that you're in, what would you, what title would that be to summarize where you are in life right now? Rest and resilience. Mm, I like that. That's gonna be that's gonna be the podcast. R and R. <laughs> Rest and resilience. I like that. I like that. Definitely. I honestly, I intentionally ask these questions because I'm yeah. like sometimes unless I listen to every single quote when I'm editing, I'm yeah. like. This just helps me make the titles. Definitely. Um, all right. So we reached that point in the episode. Uh, so you survived rapid fire, first of all. Oh, my and God. I know. And we reached that point so in the hard. episode where it's guest corner. So this is yeah. your chance to shout out anything for you, anything you want to say about anyone else, and anything, any last thing that you want to say to our listeners or viewers. So okay. the mic is yours. Um, yeah, guys. Check out my book, um, Growing Wings. So like I said previously, there's a coupon code for it, RCT5. So once you go to checkout, just put it in the coupon code RCT5, which hey. stands for Real Community Talks 5 because you get $5 off. Hey. And it's all products. So you could get the ebook for $5 or you could get the paperback for $15. Mm. So I just want it to be accessible for the community. And like if you're watching this or if you're you're into, if you follow Matt, if you're into Real Community Talks, please, please, please go and on my website and he'll link it too and mm. then yeah purchase the book if you're really interested in just poetry or reading or just life mm. um 
yeah that's probably like all i'd say i really i'm i'm i really like this is like a big thing for me in the sense of like my book has been like i've been working on this for years so i really mm. want to you know be able to promote that properly awesome yeah. and if there was one thing that you could say to our viewers or listeners something that they can take home a word of encouragement what would you say um be honest stay real mm. with yourself at all times i feel like you know we we like like because we're so in this social media age and like we see a lot of the highlights and we don't really see a lot of the low lights mm. and like as cliche as that's been sounding i just feel like it's so honest it's so it's so important to be so really honest with yourself and where you're at like for me right now i'm not living like like this fast pace like crazy getting a whole bunch of things done but i'm really in that place where you know i'm just i'm 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 looking at the fruits of my labor i'm enjoying that and just like in a process of of creating still and and just you know like moving forward and being okay with not having to always move at such a quick pace all the time mm. so i feel like yeah just be honest with where you're at and i feel like that's just that's just gonna help you along along in your journey mm, facts all right so um just before we kind of conclude i'd like to give my guests a word of encouragement um nice. obviously sometimes we can kind of with social media we get inboxes and dms and we hear right. a lot of people but like I, I like to kind of just like hear it from someone real time and mm -hmm. um not that i've known you a lot before but just from kind of viewing you on like um on the sidelines where i'm at yeah um i guess to start with is your realness like everything that you said today was real community <laughs> and i feel like the culmination of your work and the conversations we had and even the content you put out online is just real and authentic like right. when it, whether it's a post or whether it's your book or whatever right. it's what people resonate with and yeah. it's just like unfiltered whatever you were experiencing and exactly especially considering what you went through to put that into work to help people i think is so powerful um and i think your heart to build up and develop future generations is so needed like looking at all the stuff you did with read to rap and mm -hmm. and spoken heard and and the workshops that you did like yeah. like as a like creative we kind of operate in silos and kind of just build ourselves up yeah but building other people up is not just some like a good humanitarian thing to do no but it makes us better people it makes us more more diverse and versatile and talented as a creative in our craft right yeah. so i think the fact that you took time and you take time to do that is just mm -hmm. something that like people will know you exactly by your fruits and and what fruits you develop in other people so i, I really respect that about you um i think like like i mentioned your perspective on on rest and recharging is refreshing yeah um, because our fast-paced next level exhausted culture preaches one story yeah but you value rest as a means to marinate until you're ready oh for sure and put out content and i feel like a lot of creatives like you said need to understand that concept yeah, more it's, so it's important. you're living it out in real time so i, I am <laughs> i really I, I look to you as an example and i respect you about Thank that you. i appreciate that um and just just seeing where you are today and the progression of your life is truly an inspiration i believe like it's a story not only people on this platform need to hear yeah. but generations to come and, and and when you can live your life in a way that you use your story to build up others and inspire others yeah that to me is success and and keep show like to keep showing people like that hardship is seed for triumph yeah is so powerful so yes. um it's been a blessing to have you on the show oh my gosh i love and it i just wanted to thank you for being here today Joanne. no problem it's my the pleasure is mine i love being here <laughs>